Hello, today I will show the follow-up of some cases that were treated by the IDR technique. IDR is a technique that we use in compromised sockets. And it means immediate socket reconstruction soon after minimal invasive dent extraction, implant installation, and construction of the temporary crown in a single procedure. Here we have a case that we apply this technique before and two years later. Let's talk about stability of peri-implant hard and soft tissue when we apply the IDR technique in compromised sockets. And let's compare the results in some clinical cases with different biotypes. Let's start with this case, that we have an abscess in the left central incisor, and CBCT view showed total loss of the buccal bone wall and partial loss of the palatal wall. This is the extent of the bone defect at the buccal aspect. And we can notice the presence of fistula. The probing depth was 10 mm with a thick periodontal biotype. The bone loss was caused by root fracture. We can see here a total absence of the buccal bone wall. And here we have the defect to be reconstructed after a platform switching implant insertion and harvesting bone graft from the left tuberosity using a gauze shaped chisel. After reshaping the bone graft in height and width, Sometimes we can harvest the bone graft with thickness compatible with the gap dimension, like in this case. After insertion of the cortical medullar graft, and after completely filling the gaps with particulate bone, we can notice the volume of the graft after reconstruction and installation of the provisional crown. Pay attention to the correct three-dimensional position of the implant using a palatal anchorage. Here we have the immediate pause operative before and after reconstruction. We can observe the perfect filling of the spaces in the region that show the bone defect. Here we have the clinical aspect seven days later. And through CT image, we can evaluate the height and width of the buccal bone wall reconstructed. And we can compare it with the initial situation. Three months later, we can notice a bigger volume of soft tissue and the beginning of cortical bone remodeling. The Conbin CT sagittal slice showed the cortical buccal bone remodeling, which is stable 1 mm above the implant platform. Let's compare the thickness stability in the reconstructed bone 7 days after the IDR procedure and 1 year later. Take a look at this soft tissue Conbin CT that shows the thickness of hard and soft tissue. Note the buccal bone above the implant platform and the thickness of soft tissue. Then, the thicker the buccal bone wall, the better the final soft tissue volume. We had a thick biotype and now we have inadequate volume of soft tissue. Just before and two years after the reconstruction. Here we have the clinical image three years following the procedure and the periapical radiograph showing the peri-implant bone stability.
And this is another case. The right center incisor is compromised and the probing depth was 8 mm. And this is the extent of the bone defect. And we can notice the presence of fistula. The periapical radiograph evidencing good bone volume for primary implant stability. And after minimally invasive dental extraction, we could access the defect. And after osteotomy with a palatal approach, a platform switching implant was installed. And the cortical medullar graft was inserted and particulate medullar was packed into the gap between the implant and the alveolar socket. And the peri implant healing after three months. Observe the reestablishment of soft tissue architecture with satisfactory volume according to the width of the bone reconstructed. And we had a thin biotype and now we can see an adequate volume of soft tissue. And the X-ray and the CBCT images three months later. The bone graft that we had placed above the implant platform is still present. The zirconia abutment was inserted and observed the leveling of the gingival margin and the relevant volume of soft tissue. And the final ceramic crowns. In comparison of the thickness of the buccal bone wall three months and three years after the IDR procedure. And the CBCT and clinical images showing a favorable outcomes. The platform switching abutment improved good pair implant hard tissue thickness and the excellent volume of soft tissue. In this case, there was a root fracture on the left central incisor and the right central incisor was periodontally compromised. After teeth extraction, two platform switching implants were inserted and both alveolar sockets present all absence of the buccal bone wall. And here, after reconstruction. Here we can see the clinical aspect three months later when the provisional crowns were removed and observe the volume of soft tissues and special attention to the volume of the papilla between the implants. The maintenance of soft tissue volume comparing images before and after the IDR procedure. One year after the IDR technique, the CBCT at implants in right and left central incisor showing cortical bone remodeling. Note the bone reconstructed above the implant platform. The zirconia abutments were installed and the X-ray to check the adaptation. The crowns were delivered. And here we can observe the clinical aspect seven days after crown cementation. And before, immediately after crowns delivered, and three months later. Observe the pair implant soft tissue accommodation. Particularly at the interdental papilla. And this is the last case, another difficult case. A significant bone loss occurred involved the buccal, the palatal wall, and the distal crystal bone. And through X-ray and CT scan, we can see all absence of the buccal and palatal bone walls besides the root apex. We can also see here the height 
of the bone to be reconstructed. And it was confirmed using a periodontal probe. We have here more than 12 millimeters in depth in buccal and palatal aspect. A platform switching implant was inserted. Take a look at the lack of the soft tissue stability. And we evaluate all the defects to be reconstructed in the buccal, in the palatal, and distal aspect. And we can see here the height in the distal aspect to be reconstructed. We select the right tuberosity due to the good amount of the available bone. Firstly, we split the tuberosity in two halves. We harvest the outer half, as you can see following this picture, using a straight chisel. And here we can see the cortical and the medullary portions. After that, we harvest the inner half of the tuberosity. And have a look at the excellent vascularization of this bone. And we start the reconstruction. Firstly, we reconstruct the palatal wall. And after that, we reconstruct the distal bone ridge. And lastly, we reconstruct the buccal bone wall, as you can observe here. And after a total sock reconstruction. And the provisional crown was inserted out of occlusion. And the x-ray immediately after reconstruction. You can notice here the bone reconstructed at the distal aspect. And three months later, observe the volume of soft tissue in the buccal aspect. And the CBCT sagittal images showing the buccal and the palatal bone reconstructed. And axial images evidencing the reconstruction in the cervical medium and apical third of the implant. And nine months later, the quality and the volume of soft tissues are significant. The maintenance of soft tissue volume in the buccal aspect you can see here. And just comparing before and after the IDR procedure. Buccal and palatal bone remodeling three years later. And finally, just comparing before and after bone reconstruction using the IDR technique. We can see here the height of the bone reconstructed. Note the bone reconstructed above the implant platform in the buccal and palatal aspect. The bone graft that we had placed above the implant platform is still present. The positive results should be related to the bone macro and micro structure, the presence of periosteum and endosteum in this kind of graft, the rich vascularization of this graft, the juxtaposition of the graft into the receptor site, the excellent condensation of the medullar bone into the gaps that promote faster bone remodeling, mainly when associated to immediate loading, and everything maintained by the adequate emergence profile of the prosthetic crown. We have had over 260 cases, which had presented different bone defects in maxilla and mandible. The majority of the cases presented defects involving all buccal bone wall in almost 60%. Here, 
Here we are considering just the case performed by our team. The IDR protocol was also the theme of the book of the same name launched in the end of 2010 in Portuguese language by Santos Publishing, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and in Spanish language in 2012. And it will be launched in English language very soon. I am available to be contacted by email or website. Thank you for your attention and see you at the next meeting.